Hi everyone, welcome back to Cody's Lab. So today I'm going to be starting a rather ambitious project and that is to make a chainmail lab coat. <laughs> it's basically going to be a hauberk, a shirt made out of metal rings. I am doing this uh, to provide a little bit of protection, you know, in case something blows up it'll you know, provide some shrapnel resistance. But mostly I'm doing it for the weight, you know, some passive exercise. I've been packing on a few extra pounds lately and I figure this might be a fun way to get rid of it. <laughs> In fact, I have done experiments where I've worn uh, this chainmail shirt right here, in fact, for a month straight. You know, this thing is in excess of 60 pounds, and as you can see, it's incredibly stiff. It can stand on its own, practically. So, I want to make something like this. Uh, this one currently doesn't fit me anymore. I could uh, retool it, you know, expand it out a little bit and make it fit me again, but by then it'd be just way too heavy. So, I decided I would like to go and try to make something out of copper. So, you can see I've already cut a few rings here. I coiled up some 12 gauge copper wire onto a 3 8 inch steel mandrel using the lathe. And then I've cut them off using a pair of hoof nippers. I decided to go with copper because mostly I like the look and feel of it. But it's also easy to work with and you know, relatively easy to get. Now copper, uh, by volume, does weigh more than steel. Uh, it has a higher density, but these rings are much smaller. As you can see, much smaller diameter. And instead of doing the 6-in-1 uh, weave, as you can see here, I'm going to be doing the 4-in-1 uh, weave like I did on the sleeves of this one. So, more of this uh, looser weave here. So it'll be far more flexible, and I'm currently calculating that the weight of this finished shirt will be roughly 45 pounds. So not nearly, you know, about 20 pounds lighter than this one would be. Unfortunately, copper is a lot weaker than steel, and so I'm going to have to mitigate that a little bit. You know, if I'm going to be wearing this, a lot, especially out in public. I want to have something that, you know, if somebody stabs it with a knife, it would still protect me. It doesn't need to survive much. I don't plan to doing any actual combat, but, you know, a little pocket knife stab is something that may happen, you know, if I'm wearing a sh chainmail shirt and somebody decides to test it out. So, I need to make something that can survive a jab with a knife. So let's uh, try some different methods of closing these rings and uh, see which works best. The uh, weave that I'm going to be making the shirt out of is going to be the same pattern as what you have in the five Olympic rings, except of course that the pattern will be extended out much, much farther. Instead of five, it'll be you know 20,000 rings. But for now, let's uh, link them together into a little chain like this. Let's uh, hook this to a little spring scale. Let's see what the breaking strength of this little chain here is. So, let me reset this. Let's figure out how much tension I can put on this before this little chain breaks. <laughs> Not very much. Yeah, copper is very weak. If we zoom in here. Yeah, so. 10 pounds, just under 5 kilograms. That's, that's not very much uh, tensile strength there. So here are the uh, three different uh, joining methods that I've tried. This one was just using a lead-free solder. What's nice about this is that I can just use a blowtorch or even a soldering iron to do it. Uh, this one, I just heated the copper until it flowed together. It's probably not good because you can see that the metal is thinner right there. And finally, on this one I did pretty much the same thing except that I added a little bit of this uh, brass wire as filler. Let's test their breaking strength now, shall we? So first up is the soldered. <laughs> see it broke quite quickly. 
but at about 20 pounds, you know, almost twice what we had before. That's a pretty significant increase. So now we have the welded copper chain. Oh, okay. Not as much as I thought, actually. What is that? Uh, 33 pounds? So, roughly three times what the butted rings did. So now we have the brazed rings. Let's see how all these do. Oh yeah, that's much stronger. Okay. Yeah, roughly 40 pounds. So, that is the best. And it's actually a little bit easier to use the uh, filler rod when I'm welding, so that'll be the way to go. So full disclosure, I actually ended up buying a bunch of rings off of a company in Canada that sells chainmail supplies, uh, the Ring Lord. This isn't sponsored by them in any way. I just found that they were a pretty easy way to get these rings. So these are uh, copper rings. They're actually a little bit heavier gauge than what I was using. And the alloy is a little bit different. Uh, this has a higher tensile strength, so it will be stronger. Also a little bit heavier. Uh, not significantly heavier though. So. But this definitely saves me a lot of time now that I don't have to make you know, all these rings. It's, uh, actually making the rings is definitely a huge time sink. So I just finished making a little sample of chain. It's about four inches by four inches, just so we can see what the finished shirt's gonna look like. You can see every ring is welded shut, or I guess brazed shut. I think that looks very nice. It's fun to play with, it feels amazing. That's pretty cool. Uh, just for comparison's sake, I've also made another piece with just the uh, butted mail. So these are the butted rings, they're not welded. So let's uh, test out their uh, different, uh, well let's see if they can handle a knife. Let's see how different it is. Maybe if it's about the same, I'll just do the butted and save myself a whole bunch of time. Of course, I very much doubt that they'll end up being the same. Well, let's test it anyway. Block of wax, sheet of paper, and here's the butted mail. Let's uh, jab this with a little kitchen knife here. That does not look fun. That's, that's some penetration. Yes. You can see that it opened the ring right up. Cut into the paper. And nasty gouge into the wax. In fact, how deep is that? Yeah, that's yeah, I wouldn't want to have that happen in my belly. So, let's see how the uh, 
welded mail holds up, shall we? Same test. Let's see, try to get about the same orientation and everything. About the same thrust. Ow! <laughs> okay. Actually cut myself a little bit there. The knife bounced right off of there. <laughs> didn't cut into it at all. Awesome. So it passes that test. I have to go bandage myself up here. I can't even tell where I hit it. Uh, in case you're wondering what happened here is when I hit with the knife, the knife bounced up into my hand and cut me there. It's not that bad. But, obviously I'm going to need some sort of uh, chainmail gloves at some point. <laughs> so that'll be on the list of things to make. So yes, obviously this is going to take me a long time to finish the complete shirt. I have 20,000 rings plus. <laughs> Fortunately this is a project that I can do kind of passively. You know, if I'm watching YouTube videos I can just sit there and kind of knit. Uh, I don't have to give all of my attention to it. But even still, it's going to take me several months, at least. Uh, my current goal is to have this uh, finished, or at least into a wearable state, by VidCon, but I would be unsurprised if I'm still working on it this time this next year. So, so I guess until I've got a bunch of progress done on it, I'll see you guys next time. Here's another uh, chainmail shirt that I've made. Uh, this one I actually made back in high school. It's made out of a, a galvanized fencing wire, and it, it barely still fits. Uh, I, can, I can get it on, but it's not really all that good anymore. This is the first time I've worn it in about seven years. So, yeah. <laughs> See my pudge? See, this is what I want to get rid of. Yeah, this one doesn't weigh very much. It's it's very light, and also you can see the rings. You could get a knife right through that. So this this one isn't very good.